Welcome back everybody. In this video we're going to look at another area of differential calculus, this time the second derivative test. Okay, so that's f double prime. We're going to look at what it actually tells us to do with the concavity of the curve. So keep watching and we'll start to unpack this. So the second derivative could be represented by f double prime or y double prime or even d2y by dx squared. There's multiple ways that we can represent the second derivative, but they all are related to this word concavity. So if we just go down to this little example here, we can see that we have a, a curve represented by y is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now, now that is a special polynomial, it's called a quadratic, and you can see that it is concave up. So concave up is uh, basically the nature where the curve sort of continues going up, whether you go to positive or negative infinity. So think that these will continue going upwards, right? So concave up. Uh, and this is the shape on the left hand side. So if we go ahead and start to differentiate this with using the power rule, then we will get 2x minus 2. What happens if we differentiate it again, we'll get y double prime is equal to 2. Now, that is a constant and it is always positive, it's positive 2. So therefore, then we can establish that the second derivative, or f double prime, right, is always going to be greater than 0. A way of remembering this is also to rotate this expression 90 degrees to the right, which is not a mathematical um, solve or anything like that, but we can just see that the inequality has this kind of concave up nature. So that's one little quick way of remembering. If the second derivative is greater than zero, when we rotate it 90 degrees, we'll see this kind of concave up shape, which is exactly what we have over here. Okay, now we're going to go into the theory behind that a little bit more in this video. So if we go down to this example here, we have another curve and it is represented in the form y is equal to minus 2x squared plus 5x minus 1. And if we go ahead and start to differentiate that again using power rule, we get minus 4x plus 5. And if we differentiate it again, we'll get negative 4. Now, that's always going to stay as negative 4. There's no variable x. So this is a negative value. So therefore, we can now just establish that the second derivative of uh, this function is always going to be less than zero. So therefore we have found a maximum point on the curve, otherwise known as a concave down nature to the curve. Okay, so we can do that little trick again where I rotate it 90 degrees and you can see that this little inequality here does match the nature of the curve there. Remember, that's not a mathematical um, solve or anything like that. That is just a quick way of remembering it. So what happens when this concave down and concave up meet? Well, I've shown that in this example here. Now we've got three pictures. I just want to focus on, uh, I'll call this um, picture A, right? So figure A. We have a concave down, which is this, and we have a concave up part of the curve. So at one point, the concavity needs to change from being a concave down to being a concave up. And what I can do is I can represent that in the middle here. I'll just draw a circle, okay, there. At that point there where the green circle is, that is when the concavity changes from concave up to concave down. Now, because the concave up and concave down natures are either greater than or less than zero, at some point we have to pass through that point zero, and that is exactly the location of the point of inflection. So at this point here, the second derivative is going to be zero. So a point of inflection has the second derivative of equal to zero. And that is what I've represented down here in this little box. So um, neither concave up or concave down will be equal to zero for the second derivative. Now, one thing I just want to state here is this is known as a non stationary point of inflection. Okay, so a non-stationary point of inflection is when the gradient is not equal to zero at that point. That's quite important because it, it could be stationary and that's what I've shown in these two examples below here. Uh, point C is a point of inflection because we have a concave down part of the curve here versus a concave up. Uh, if you want to sort of imagine it as though this curve kept on going down like this, and this curve was going up, then we can see that the two concavities meet in the middle there at C. 
But this is a stationary point of inflection, so a stationary. And so is point D, for exactly the same reason. It's just a mirror image of the other um, figure, okay? So we've got stationary and non-stationary, both adhere to the fact that the second derivative is equal to zero. Okay, so I have a past exam question here. Um, it's going to involve second derivatives. It's worth 11 marks, so let's get started. Uh, consider the curve with this equation. Find the first derivative, so dy by dx. Uh, y prime is equal to 3x squared minus uh, 2x, okay, minus 1. Uh, the second derivative then in part 2 is y double prime is equal to 6x minus 2. So part one telling us the gradient function, part two is related to the concavity of the curve. The curve has a local maximum at A. So a maximum would mean the concave down nature of the curve, uh, a maximum occurring here at the top when the gradient is equal to zero. Don't forget then that the second derivative, what we're looking for would be when the second derivative is less than zero, okay? Uh, find the coordinates of A using the answer in part a2 to justify your answer so i'll just do that answer just here actually so first of all we know that the gradient on a maximum would be equal to zero so i'm going to use the gradient function y prime uh, is equal to 3x squared minus 2x minus 1 uh, i'm going to equate that to zero because we know that the maximum point will have a gradient of zero so zero equals 3x squared minus 2x minus 1 and i can simply go ahead and factorize that now into 3x x uh, this will be minus 1 and this will be plus 1 so i've almost found the points where the gradient will be equal to 0 i just need to solve these two little brackets these parentheses here when is this equal to 0 or when is this equal to 0 so let's go ahead and do that now so either 3x equals minus 1 so x is minus 1 third or x minus 1 equals 0 so x equals 1 so we've got two answers there at places on the curve where the gradient is equal to 0 but it does ask us to only specifically find the maximum so one of those values when we substitute it into the second derivative uh, expression should come out to be less than zero. So the second derivative expression was this thing here. Okay, so 6x minus 2. So the second derivative was equal to 6x minus 2. And I'm going to substitute in, let's substitute in minus one third. So when we substitute in minus one third, we will get, well, 6 times minus one third would be minus 2. Minus 2 times minus 2 would be minus 4. So that is going to be the local maximum because the second derivative is less than zero just for completion i will just substitute the one in to show you that we don't get another maximum because it says there's only one maximum uh, the second derivative at one uh, when we plug it into 6x minus 2 will be 6 minus 2 which is 4 okay which is positive 4 so therefore that would lead us to believe that the second derivative being greater than zero is a local minimum, right? So I'll just put minimum there, okay? Um, so we're interested in this minus one third. Now it does say state the coordinates of A, A. So state the coordinates of A to justify my answer as well. Well, I think I've justified my answer using the second derivative. So let's just go ahead and find the coordinates. So therefore then we need to take X is minus one third and we need to substitute it into the original expression to find the value of y. So the original expression was y is equal to x cubed minus x squared and minus x plus 1, right? So minus x plus 1. Let's go ahead and substitute this third in. So there's going to be a bit of a numerical exercise here of just without a calculator, minus 1 third. Out of 27, okay? There. So that's the coordinate of A. Um, the last part of the question states that the curve has a point of inflection at B. So the point of inflection, remember, is when the second derivative is equal to zero. Okay, find the coordinates of B. So I want to find the second derivative expression, uh, which I found in part two, this one here. Uh, I'll just screenshot that for you. 
okay copy and we want to equate that to zero so i'm just going to go down here let's paste that down and we just want to equate this thing to zero so zero equals six x minus two so therefore two is equal to six x therefore x is equal to one third so the point of inflection occurs when x is my uh, sorry positive one third good luck with your second derivatives let me know how you get on in the comments below don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel see you next time agent x signing off